could be a villain in everything. <laughs> Every animated thing, you should be a villain. Yeah, that's this... insane. You've got a beautiful voice for voice acting. That's... This I get offered all the time for voice acting work. The only you problem is they too. want me to voice as black people. As, as, you do not tell yourself <laughs> so. As is very good at it. Do your movie voice. I am what? Which one, mate? The, 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 no, which... the chocolate. No, how about the chocolate? The when the chocolates voice you did for the for the ad that was fucking good. Yeah, like, oh, oh, okay, okay. When I, you, uh, you have had a hard day's work on the laundry mat, and then you go home. And there's there's a, there's a thing. There's a you got a you got a Perry Chan thing. The one doing it. He's got a reverb on it. He's got a little bit of an echo on it, so he gets a little you echo going. Get yourself, because it's a dreaming. You see, after a hard day scrubbing the gussets and doing the dishes, you go up to bed, fall asleep, but wait. The window is open, and the man walks in with a box of chocolate this was some fucking chocolate ad in the uk right yeah where it's like setting up two people fucking the man from <laughs> Mil- well the, the man from milk tray uh slips into your room uh slides your box of chockies maybe fingers you chockies. and then goes off and uh stabs the shark uh that's uh outside your, your boat he's, he's a mega shark yeah and yeah. then we got a uh, flake adverts where women suck off chocolate Oh yeah, no. Oh yeah, those, those are great. Um, all I was gonna say was like, yeah, the, that's the problem with the the whole like. Oh, I was like, you you got a good voice. Surely the you get where it's like there's like thousands of people with amazing voices. Yeah. In uh, <laughs> in voice acting, and someone says like, I need if they say British villain, you have like, you can even see a competition depending on what site you're using, and you're just like, okay, some of these are just this guy apparently is doing a like you're like I'll do the job for one dollar, and it's like the studio quality he's given like ten thousand different versions you're just like yeah i can't compete with this <laughs> like no um just do your own thing man well that's the thing i uh i, yeah. I did give it a shot while i was making videos too i was, I was yeah. just doing it as a side thing it's but just... does anyone say maybe he'll finger you with his penis exactly <laughs> that's the it's the way to make it you know and, uh, i think even like bigger voice actors have complained that their industry is just fucks there's loads of problems with it. Well, especially in anime Ooh. where they're all well, yeah. hanging out with like uh, uh, diddlers, kid diddlers, and, re- wow. and defending them and getting yeah. rid of uh, like good guys like Vic Mignogna. Yeah. You know, but you know, I did narrate up. a whole video game. So there's that. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's it's a, cool. It's a game yeah. where you play as an ant colony and you try and survive in the wilderness. It's a very, uh, you, you get to do some fun stuff where they would be like, the if you fight like a giant spider for example they'll give you the latin name of it first it'd be like this is the uh crocmanantis yeah. <laughs> like, Ooh. Ooh. has 17 talons and you're just like oh god <laughs> and then what you send all your ants to devour it uh it's called empires of the undergrowth it's um it's getting a it's, it's in early access i think for uh, like four years but um i recently finished the um the third section of the voice acting for it, so it's getting a full release eventually. I don't know when. That's awesome. Oh, that's I'm, cool. I'm getting that's that. Too bad. I could have been the final boss because I killed so many motherfucking ants who were coming into his office. <laughs> I, was I thought they would do that. Uh, I was asking them about the you know developing the game. I was like, you gotta have man be the final boss. <laughs> like, I took them all out. I, I usually, you know what? I'm not big on like if there's a spider in my house, I put I I put them outside. I don't kill them, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Cockroach, I'll kill that fucking thing. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Ants, dead, dead, fucking dead. Mossy dead. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, dead. Mossy's killed them. Spiders, Mossy. dead. spiders, I have respect for because of Spider Man. So I, I, you know, even if they're like really poisonous, because they were in Escondido with a lot of black widows and stuff. Ooh. Ooh. Um. Oh yeah. They're, they're, you know, don't fuck with them. They'll jump. They can jump fucking far. <laughs> oh oh yeah. They can <laughs> jump. Oh, dude. Uh, the, the dude, the bugs dude. here are huge. <laughs> Lost I mean, I'm like, this big, motherfucking oh. this big. I was like, oh shit. Uh, so yeah, I gotta get used to that. Dude, spiders really feel engineered to just look creepy. It's like, yes, whoever made them was definitely thinking about that. Have you That's seen cool. like the deep sea creatures? Oh, yes, yeah. they all like, they're all alien. 
yeah you you look at some of them and you're like okay so someone someone made this that's not natural one hundred percent the one with the lamp out in front and the, yeah. Just, yeah that one's kind of yeah. cute yeah. uh it's kind of totally, cute sorry just it all like, like a new shark and accident shit. it was just an accident nature just evolved it that's all yeah <laughs> yep just got this horrifying face that's like, oh, and you know, it, it shows you a nice little light, and you go up to it, you daggle, and it's like, oh, fucks you up! Fucking she swallow you. Anything in nature that's shiny and bright, Stay that's a warning. Yep. Yeah. Stay the fuck away from it. All right. Get the fuck uh, away from me. This is uh, the latest uh, Moon Knight clip. All right. Let's do it. Oh. I can finally see myself in this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's it called? Annoying it's bitch. Called... Look at her. She's got my hair, you guys. <laughs> summon, <laughs> summon the, the suit. suit. Official clip. So this is summon the suit. Okay. So, so you're like, hey, we're going to see Moon Knight in his suit. <laughs> summon the suit. Summon the suit? What are you saying? The suit. The suit. The suit. And keep the suit. So be it. Let's go. Okay. So be it. Oh, yeah. Oh, she just pushes one oh, two guys awkward. there, no room. Oh, oh my god, shake camera going upstairs. Bad guy just yeah. sits there with his cane. And you run from oh, what what? Okay. I don't Let know if that go, guy I got teleported up and he's just I don't oh. Oh, oh, you go, oh. girl. Oh look at that. He's kicking oh. his ass. Just kicking his ass. Down he goes. Oh, Independent women. That was awesome. <laughs> And, and, that was uh, awesome. It was awesome. Did you say hot tub? <laughs> hot tub time machine. I think he said uh, hot tub. I think he said hot tub. Hot tub time machine. Great, great fucking movie, by the way. Oh, I yeah. love that movie. Love that movie. Ah, oh no. Looks like Ghostbusters. Looks oh my god. He's melting the concrete. Oh, no. Ooh, that didn't look too good. That no. did not look good at all. Ooh, look real cheap. Oh, oh, look at this 4K internet. Or 4K. <laughs> all right, why did I say 4K? God Dude, uh, fiber internet. There we Is go. That not finished. That's that cannot be finished. Oh, no, there's no way that's finished. Can you go full screen? On Wouldn't it have been cheaper and better to hear a growl and then we cut away? Yes, probably. To, yeah, not to show the hand because it's like, uh. Oh, dude, you can see the outlines on the... Oh, it's so bad. That is horrible. Come on, Disney. Well, you know what? Yeah. Disney doesn't have to try, though. They don't have to try. You no, know what? No. I'm, you know, as says bait and switch, I'm going to say MCU and the stand that are I'm they're not bots. These are real people are going to come out <laughs> and call us racist and sexist mm -hmm. because we mm -hmm. call this hand fake and uh, some 120... <laughs> I don't want it. The 115 pound woman, maybe. You're just scared of strong You're just women. Scared of women. Um, okay. All right. Well, I'm sure people will adore this show for a week or so, and then they'll forget it exists again. Yep. Yeah. It'll be the greatest thing. Uh, it's already been the great. This is the greatest Disney Plus Marvel series. Oh yeah, definitely. We've already heard. And you that. know why, Gary? Because this one's focused on character. That's what they'll say. And it's like, didn't you guys say this about all the other ones? And it's like. No, yeah. this one's different. This yeah. one's different because this one's about a deeper struggle. The others weren't. Like, oh, this okay. is about mental health issues because we're going to use all the identities from uh, Moon Knight, which they did in the comics, and blend yeah. them all into one. But we're going to focus on Stephen Grant, which was an alias for an alias of an alias. I've been uh, reading that. Begin with. So Stephen Grant is the beta version, but he's not supposed to be, but they're going to use him as that. And it's supposed to be kind of like... Um, jack the unnamed jack in uh fight club mm -hmm. um and i am jack's small penis that's what it's basically gonna be <laughs> and uh he's gonna be the beta and mark specter will be like tyler durden but he'll probably end up being bad that that persona will end up being bad because that's the alpha oh. persona right <laughs> He's going to be like the white man bad slash like dude that's like from, yeah. you know, abusive, uh, you know, wife beater, whatever, like what, whatever. Like he's going to be the Donald Trump character like the, so, the Yeah. So when he's not Moon Knight, we're going to be following around little beta Stephen Grant, who's scared of everything. Uh, uh, and she, he'll be led around by strong whammon. 
Any idea who this, this girl is? Like, she a character from the comics or anything? Or? I'm sure she is. Uh, I don't know which one, though. Uh, I haven't looked into it that hard. Uh, I'm sure they drew it from the comic and probably race swapped. Uh, but I, I have, I can look. Yeah, I'm not sure who she is because I was his, curious if maybe she's got powers as well. His main girl is a she, white. She doesn't girl. need powers. She's a woman. I mean, I mean, that what, is a power this, as <laughs> the power of vagina. That's what she's got. See, hmm. she doesn't. She doesn't even need powers because she's just going around a pushing guys over, no problem. Two of them, in actual fact. Uh, then just absolutely. By the way, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Henchmen. <laughs> Do you know why henchmen are hired? Because they're useless. Because because their muscle. Yep. To get shit done. No, Apart from when sure it's a Marvel leave. fucking show and they're just there to be beaten up by fucking 105 pound women. It just, what is the fucking point in even having them? It's just so boring to watch this sort of stuff. Fucking crushingly boring. Why yeah, even like, fucking bother? Why bother? Why bother? Imagine she's like kicking and punching at one of these guys, the henchmen, and they just land one solid punch in her face and she just falls off. It falls over. I'm Breaks not even saying this nose. is like a... Oh, wouldn't that be so funny? Just it's just like I'm pretty sure that would be more engaging. Or she punched them in the face and broke a fucking wrist. And mm. then she had to like, you know, use some other form of like creative thinking to be able to beat the the lads because they're so fucking big. Because the henchmen often are pretty big. But they don't even fight. They just stand there and get punched and hit. Well yeah, they gotta they gotta reach their cues as they gotta make sure they jump at the right time or duck at the right time or go mm. ah at the right time. Like that that scene where she was beating that guy up, it would have been more interesting if the guy had thrown her down and then that other guy was like, Oh no, I have to go back down the stairs again and get her. <laughs> but why like... why give him the scarab uh to, to keep safe yeah. when you, you clearly didn't need to because look at you. Yeah, she should have it. I don't see why yeah, he's she... yeah, she can take care of herself. He's the chicken I'm shit who can't summon his suit. You're the one who's fucking take care now, uh, taking care of everyone. I am so fucking bored of this. It's tired. It's, it's, Why not, like, such, it's a trope. It is such a terrible trope now. If she really has helped him in this, that, and the other way, like, why not make it so that she gets in trouble with these guys and he has to, you know, he has to rise up. He has to help her. It's a really normal payoff, isn't it? Where you have, like, your reluctant hero... But when their friend is threatened, that's when they can spring into action better. This is like standard stuff. Obviously, I don't know the context exactly for where this scene lands, but um, oh man, so many people are excited for Moon Knight being good, and I'm just like, mm. but what I saw, and I don't know anything about Moon Knight, about the character, about his powers, about that world, about her. What I saw from a prospective customer to watch this show was. A woman surrounded by the main villain of the show and his uh, group of henchmen having no trouble whatsoever getting away. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with you. And uh, it's going to affect the stakes. But I mean, this is a through and through Disney product. So we can expect all the usual fuck ups. Um, I know that there's been an attempt in the marketing to be like this one. I think Oscar Isaac has been like this one's going to be a full-on character study this time. We're not going to be like that's why he was interested in the project. And I'm just like Oscar, if we have another fucking Force Awakens situation here where you you're like it's super excited to work with this big company and then it's just shit and you never want to go back. Just like oh, because um, I don't even think people have any any clue who Moon Knight was other than comic like bigger comic fans. But he just sounds kind of neat from a quick He's, intro. Uh, so Marvel's like, never done much with him, all right. So, like, uh, like the Eternals, you're going to have all the Moon Knight experts rolling out any moment. Oh yeah. Um, I would argue yeah. Robert Meyer Burnett, his his knowledge of Moon Knight was good. So, if you want to listen to that, that's good fucking knowledge. Um, uh, Moon Knight's Marvel's most underused character. They've never fucking figured him out. Uh, quite frankly, the Bill Sienkiewicz run. From the 80s when i grew up when he was mark specter that's the shit that was good and there's been some misfires uh i didn't even 
bother reading the Mr. Knight shit. I, I dipped into it. I hated it. I fucking hated it because it's modern comics. Modern comics mostly suck. Um, so I don't like that persona. There's a lot of personas, and it used to be different, but then they merged them all. So he has not schizophrenia, but personality dissociation disorder. That's often mislabeled as schizophrenia. Uh, so he has all these personalities in him. But they used to be, he used to be Batman. He used to be fucking Batman, but with some aliases. He has, he was a, I had a, he was a cab driver, but he was really a multimillionaire and spy and cab driver, all kind of mixed into one and had a cool suit. And he was basically the, the, the white Batman, you know, white costume Batman. Uh, then they turned it more supernatural and connected to the Egyptian gods, which is, I mean, that was there in the beginning. It was fucking cool. Um, and yeah, but they never knew that they, you know, he was in the West Coast Avengers for a little while. Had a couple, couple, couple good runs. Uh, Brian Hitch did a book in the mid aughts. That was pretty good. Uh, that was the last one I really read. But no, not not too many people outside of Marvel comics will know who this guy is. Uh, but they have great potential like this. If this was normal times, which it's not, this could be an immensely popular character. But I think you guys are right. I think we're going to get the same shit we've seen in every other Disney-associated thing over the last calendar. How long has it been now, Mahler? Since Captain Marvel? Mm -hmm. maybe? But, dude, this is... Pretty much, yeah. What? Trailer? Well, this... Infinity War felt like the last one... <laughs> Yeah, I don't even like. I, That's I can't a long what time ago about. now, kids. How that's much, a long. Uh, 2019. We'll say 19. Sorry. So that's three years. Two, three years. We're going on. Endgame here. soured, super bad in my opinion. Like at this point, it is not a good film. Period. I just like I just come to hate all the endings for the characters. When in the cinema, I think I was like, this is fine. In in fact, some of them are pretty good. But like um. You know how poorly written it was that none of them cared how people came back? They just wanted to do it? Like, that's going to eventually be used against them by some cocky writer. They'll be like, Iron Man and Steve Rogers were fucking assholes, idiots, who brought everyone back in pain and misery. It's like, that's not what they did, though. That's the Russo's fault for writing them that way. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have done that. The idea of dropping fucking three, four million people onto Earth and just hoping they'll be okay, they never would have thought that. No, I fucking hate it when you tell me that this is a plan that was constructed by Tony Stark, one of the world's like smartest people ever, and Bruce Banner, one of the smartest people ever, and Steve Rogers, one of the most caring people ever. It's like, nah. Nah, and it's like, yeah, well, it's canon now, and they're going to use it against him eventually. No, no. Just and, like and the I'm... shit where they're like, nah, Tony didn't pay anyone because he was a dick. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Tony didn't pay anyone thing was great. Absolute um... horseshit. It Not was true. so stupid because it's like you can't even go to like what's her face, um, when a Thousand character, and be like, "Yo, is there an account for me?" Like, no, like there's nothing. There's, he didn't think of anybody. Like none of his friends. So yeah, you're stupid. right. Pepper Potts wouldn't have let that happen. So no, it's just not true. No, it's it's so out of character. You're right, and and they're they've been spending their time fixing it. Like they've been, like this, the, you know, the whole point of Winter Soldier. Was supposed to be some kind of like really uh, uh i don't know uh al it's supposed to be an allegory for our time people wanting their free shit back that they never deserved in the first place and they won't go <laughs> for it and then they made her a martyr and to this day the people who wrote that don't see the moral quandary with that with the the woman killing people well dude she was literally antifa it was pretty bad <laughs> she was like, antifa and then like uh, there's even a line there's even a line where winter soldier bucky goes how is she any different from baron zemo and and then falcon our hero goes it's in the motivation yeah. oh my god so it's okay to kill people then falcon new That's captain so america cringe. new oh captain god. america says it's okay to kill people in the show where he becomes Captain America, Black Falcon, Captain America, derivative Captain America. But her yeah. motivation was to get the shit back that she got for free because people got zapped. Oh, God, don't remind me of that fucking TV show, man. That's so it was never heard to begin shit. with. I never did a review on I got so mad at it. I it wrote out a whole shit. script for it. I never got to make it. I'm going to go back to it one day. I'm going to annihilate that show one day. It was so bad. 
I'm gonna annihilate. I'm so him. lucky he that Zemo. Zemo's like the only person who made it out of there unscathed. I don't even know how that happened. Even after his silly little dancing scene, but yeah. Um, yeah. Because well, he, was, he, he was got taken away by the Wakanda. Wakanda, who can just just break jurisdiction wherever they want. This isolation, isolationist nation hey man, that can just go anywhere. Marvel account tweeted out how awesome that line is, and it's just like, are you guys not? Do, do you even realize what the point of your own show was? You fucking right. idiots! <laughs> I know, dude. They're so fucking dumb. Uh, are we done staring at this hand? Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, just if you remember, her motivation was like, oh, we got to get resources back and around to everyone else. And her plan involves blowing up places that have resource distribution. Distribution. Uh, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> A complete misunderstanding of how logistics work. How uh... the motivation. Remember, they're like, it must be the evil people are in charge. Then you find out the people in charge are like, we're trying to get things to people. It's really fucking yeah. difficult. What do you think we should do? Do better. Do better. God, I can't believe that show happened. But then again, they're all just terrible. Oh, it doesn't get any better. The one you missed was the worst. Was the you worst reckon? as far as logic. Hawkeye at the end, their fight at the on the ice rink was the most embarrassing thing Disney ever. <laughs> I mean, I saw, I keep I saw your clips for that in your video, but I mean, worse than Loki. I don't know, man. Don't it was know. worse. Well, yeah, because the stunts were so bad. Like, I only gave you a couple clips, but if you just sat there, I mean, like, maybe just watch, find the clip of, uh, I'll get it for you, of the final fight and just have EFAP look at it and you guys will laugh your fucking asses off. It is so bad. The stunt people are so bad. They don't know what they're doing. They're reacting to shit wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and then Hawkeye is in his uh, Brian Boitano fucking <laughs> Hawkeye uniform going, I'm ice skating and I'm shooting arrows. And uh, yeah, Hawkeye finally gets a costume and it's like they, they dissed Hawkeye's costume in the show and then they gave him a gayer costume in the show. <laughs> and is that costume, worth... His original cool. costume is cool, by the way. Not gay. This one, bad. It was bad. Ugh. God. I wonder if that's worse than uh, making Loki a crybaby who gets kicked in the nuts over and over again. Oh, he cries at the end. He's on his knees crying after five foot one Florence... Pew kicks the shit out of him because he lets her. And then they have a cry about how much they like Nat. Is that it? Yeah. And they just talk about how awesome Black Widow was, who fucking like fought him off to sacrifice herself. She's like, I he didn't want it to happen. And then yeah, she's I a total bitch to him, her sister. And then he says he's sorry. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> Does she ever find out like why Nat? died for him what is, is that does that come up because like it always bothered me that those two would even have a conflict it's like your sister sacrificed herself so that i could be with my family it's like it, okay. that never really specifically comes up no he said it was yeah, her okay. choice i wish i could have you know but no because the minute that happens that makes it what florence Pugh's doing like all her righteous anger just you know that, that's yeah. what it was it was well, just no you know why it is because in black widow the fucking movie when they made that really touching moment in the Avengers between her and and uh, Hawkeye about her not feeling you not feeling full, you know, complete because of having a hysterectomy, having her fucking ovaries ripped out, turned it in Black Widow into a fucking joke. So the fact that Black Widow saw Hawkeye and the Avengers and everyone else's family, because that family didn't fucking exist then, by the way and wanted their families to actually go on because her family was an adopted one, sacrificed herself so that they could go on. But then they gave her a family and changed her complete character motivations and everything. Yep. And made a complete muck-up of it all. But and they, it really I guess, did. As um, long as it was Hawkeye's fault, that's, the, that's what and, all that counts. Yeah, and it all gets confirmed in Hawkeye. Like, her sacrifice was not for the Avengers. It was for her new family, her, her Russian family. Bullshit. That's the, that's the thing. They did a lot of character work for her in Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Winter Soldier. They had a clearly, specifically laid out arc for her. She's all about that family, and she really cares that the team stays together, and she doesn't care what form that takes. She just... Sorry, it's and her and Banner, isn't it? Not her and Hawkeye. It's her and Banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
and I, yeah, I found that really appealing, like the idea of uh, her just having all of that taken away from her, her childhood, her family when she was younger, whoever they may have been. And so she builds her own one. And then her fucking movie just says, no, she had a family the whole time. She just didn't care yeah. about them. It's like, you well, fuckers, you just ruined everything. They just ruined, like, doesn't bring them up once in the entire fucking MCU until after she's dead. And oh, yeah, uh, uh, Hawkeye, while he's on his knees, basically, I'm going to paraphrase because I don't know the exact line, says, she did it to save you. She did it to save you. Right. Not us. You. So that's your thing, man. They got a, it's not passing the baton. It's basically like fucking shoving it down other characters' throats. It's like, yeah. this is the Black Widow appreciation baton. Now Florence Pugh has it. Okay, everyone accept that. Dude, it's, it, I mean, do, do tall women not exist? I know they don't exist in Hollywood because <laughs> tall men don't. But like, get some fucking women who look like they can fight. Like, that's, I mean, that's kind of my only complaint. Like, Brie Larson, horribly miscast. I, I don't buy her as a fu- her pencil arms. Uh, they doesn't... find them. Yeah, and uh, mm. Florence Pugh too short. Uh, uh, what? Um, God, I'm forgetting her name now. Uh, Kate Bishop, decent casting. Haley decent Seinfeld, casting. horrible writing. Decent casting though. Like actually, could have uh, Haley uh, S- Seinfeld. Um, yeah, I think she's uh, she had potential to make that character likable that's not likable in the comic books uh, and still could maybe, but the writing was just shit. Um, yeah, she was great compared to like the Loki lady. She, that, oh, that chick was dude. freaking awful. Another one. Like she's beating oh, the shit out of everybody. She is like, she's a little sprite. She's yep. a little fucking sprite. Like get if you're gonna get some women, uh, get some. There's more than no, one Gina. I mean, there's one Gina Carano, but there's other women out there who are big that look like they can fucking fight. You know, mm-hmm. like that's all. Well, and, remember Brienne? They um, even though she's not like a particularly muscly person, her size and then the armor in Game of Thrones, it can easily have us believe like, yeah, she could probably take on a guy. Yep. Um, and she's been training for it like a whole life to prove herself. This is the kind of work you got to do. And yep. they don't understand. It gives you a character that people love people love brianna toth um for a while drinker <laughs> yeah, tweeted out her. jessica beale from blade three oh, like yeah. did her fucking work like she mm-hmm. went out there and she yoked up for the role you know and uh and what's her name from that horrible terminator film i mean uh, they made her look like justin bieber but she at least worked out for the role you know yeah and then you, you can give go her back then to that. uh linda hamilton for t2 yep she uh it's like a shocking character introduction. She's like, "Oh shit, she's come Dude. a long way." No, that's that's where you that's where the verisimilitude hooks you, right? When you see the difference in Linda fucking Hamilton, it's shocking. Now, it's hard to explain, but like nobody expected that in the movie, and all of a sudden, what? That's Linda Hamilton? What? And, Dude, it's and downright what? bold to show the ending of T one and then be like, "Where does this character end up?" And she's like, "Hopeful heading into the the sunset or, or whatever." Just like I say, hopeful. She knows what's gonna happen and she's come to peace with it. It's like we're, we're getting ready. And then T two, she's in a fucking mental asylum. Her, her son hates her, and she's like training nonstop because she's telling everybody the robots are coming to kill us all. It's like, yep. Holy shit! That is that is reasonable. That would eventually happen. Yeah. Oh, it's feel fucking badass when you saw it. Like everybody liked it. Everybody liked it. Nobody had a fucking problem with it. So you know what they had to do? They had to take one of our favorite female characters and completely fuck her over in her own franchise from James Cameron, who promoted uh, the movie. I'm pretty sure. Who, oh who, yeah. Who wrote the movie and came up with the idea of killing John Connor in the first thirty fucking seconds? He went full soy. That's what I mean, man. Oh, Kill, wipe out John Connor. She has no chance of being any savior to anybody, and then have Sarah Connor say that she doesn't even fucking like being a mother. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, antinatalist Sarah Connor. Um, uh, uh, uh J- James Cameron has so much dirt on him. That's why he's being a good little boy. Hmm. He's he he. That guy should have been me too. That Hollywood eight oh, years ago. Oh, has he got like a Joss Whedon past or well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one, worse. Right? He's worse than Joss Whedon. He is a tyrant on set like absolute oh. pirate like motherfucking asshole on set brilliant director and most directors were uh and but a dick uh, i don't have a problem with that personally 
but some it people. does it does seem like uh you hear this about all the greatest directors maybe not like steven spielberg but um was it uh hitchcock he's, he's a and, dick on um, set too yeah Kubrick. Like yeah these people who have famed for changing film forever yeah. And they have like some of the greatest movies of all time. It's like, oh, did you know what they were like on set? And it's like, let me guess. They were they yeah. shouted at everybody and they said yeah. it has to be their way. Geniuses usually have a temperament. Like oh, they, Coppola. Yeah. Coppola. He was kind of a sweet guy, though. He was like a manic dude. It would yell and go cry. I mean, like, dude, it's documented. If if anybody wants to see it, uh, Heart of Darkness, directed by his wife, one of the greatest film documentaries ever made. If you want to see into the mind of a director, watch that. It is fucking something else it is just as good as apocalypse now heart of darkness and that's the thing um, that, like you hear the someone like ryan johnson apparently he's really nice on set and everyone gets along with him and i'm just like oh god yeah well i mean john houston I yes you're right he was an asshole you start too. to think that maybe there is something to um being that kind of control sort of freaking uh being that rough with your actors to get the things you need out of them i don't know this is yeah. the thing we, we've talked about this before, I think, but it's just like so unfortunate that there's so much trauma that comes for the actors and the the sets and stuff. But at the same time, um, how much do you think is worth having like one of the mo biggest masterpieces of all time? How much like human suffering right. is like? Well, it's yeah. a difficult question to answer, I guess. One of the nicest directors out there, Sam Raimi. Yeah, one of the most easygoing. Well, like, nice I, as far as I know, Zack Snyder is one of the directors. nicest directors out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for actors, they they actors love him. Actors, for the most part, love this guy, don't they? I mean, like, look at how much they're going to bat for him. Um, you don't see uh, anybody going back for Joss. No, uh, you don't. And then Nicholas Brendan just came out against him. It's like, dude. Oh, he's you know he's what sober he's up to. for six months in a row, and, and then talk to me about anything. He, um. um he, he put in a book, didn't he? He's trying to I sell the it. book. So he's even, he even shot on uh, David Boreanaz in that as well. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's, that guy has just been messed up. Uh, it's sad. It's pretty sad. What do you I think? Th it's, it's hard, hard not, not to yeah. conclude this, but I think uh, Buffy as a gig was really solid for him. And as soon as that ended, it was over. Uh, yeah, it was a bit directionless. Because, um, yeah, that's the thing with the Buffy sort of cast, the Buffy and Angel cast. You look at them, you're like, so. Angel managed to get himself another main TV show, and he's now again on another main TV show. I think Sarah Michelle Gellar had a couple movies, but and then again. she retired to become a stay-at-home mom sort of thing, and now she's yeah, back. She's she... already getting roles again. Yep. Um, Willow, she ended up in How I Met Your Mother. Yep, so that she's Pie. taking care of the rest of her life. Yep. Um, Isn't that getting and that the, And the American Pie stuff. She's got the American Pie stuff as well. Yeah, she was helpful. in uh, the reunion film as well, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. So, but like yeah. Buffy, like Angel and Buffy were set or poised to like a reunion film at some day. That probably would have done pretty well. I'm getting, <laughs> um, I've been getting if, articles uh, being like there's still rumblings about the, the starting yeah. back up to make a Buffy thing. And it's just like, please Can't, don't. Cannot. Cannot. Not, not, it, maybe <sighs> you get, uh, what was it? Uh, every writer who was involved except for Joss? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but I doubt it. I and that's the thing. It. He will not be allowed anywhere near it. Uh, well, and he would have to have say because he owns it still. Yeah, like he still owns it. It's his baby, so he can say yes or no. And he um, feels very disrespected. And Josh, oh, and he doesn't no. feel like he's done anything wrong. <laughs> so uh, that article we read was something else. That was Mother. something else. That was something else. Uh. Let's what were you gonna say something, Nina? Sorry. Yeah, Gary, I have a question with regards to like just going back a little bit about you know powerful female characters uh, versus not. Um, what did you guys think of the character? Because I think you guys have all seen Reacher. What did you guys think of that character, Neely, uh, the the black girl? Because she was like a a very kind of like she could hold her own, and uh, I thought in in the storyline it made sense because she was a, a soldier, uh, someone who as uh, you know we assumed had had training and was in his unit, <clears throat> so you could tell. And she was kind of like built and tall, and I I you know a little bit muscle muscly, so I, I thought she had the figure for it. But I mean, I didn't like that strip club scene because I thought it was a little too feminist and woke. But um, what did it you guys think pathetic, of her? This pathetic. Mm. Everything uh, the, the, if you take that strip club scene out and yeah, that it's was fine. Terrible. Oh wait, yeah, wait, wait. Give me give me context. She... What's the strip strip the, the... Okay, so um so Reacher has a former 
military colleague. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. Female, black. So uh, you kind of think, oh, where are they going to go with this? But no, she she seemed to be fine. And then they go and meet up in a strip club to pass on some information or whatever. And there's a guy who's uh, getting a lap dance and he's uh, a little bit handsy with the um, the stripper. So instead of the bouncers of the strip club telling the guy, hey, you know, cut it out. She goes over and punches him in the fucking face. Well, and also Reacher was also going to go. And she was like, no, 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 I got this. And she like went up. Yeah, she punches him in the face. And she's like, when a woman says no, she means no. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, wh why? That's the only thing in this whole series. Why? Yeah. Why are you there? This is, this is completely, this is completely out of character for the whole fucking show. Uh, and it just so happens to to uh, coincidentally happen when you you introduce this new character, in. and then after that she's fine again. Mm -hmm. A little bit one though, underdeveloped, but um, she was a side character. But that bit, the the strip club bit, is just you know for, for what is a really good series. That strip club bit just made me just go oh. It was cringe. I didn't like that part either. But I thought for her physique and the character, though, like the way that she looks and stuff, like I thought at least she looks a little bit better. She was built. Than, yeah, than some of the Marvel girls we've been getting, like that are that just look absolutely like kind of like me. Like they look very, you know, petite. And you're like, there's no way you're you're taking on a 200 pound guy. At least that chick had some muscle. So I was like, uh. Um, Last thing, they're giving a lot of them nondescript power energy power and so yeah. it's like they don't have to care or captain like, america's gauntlets which fucking not, not oh. I say captain marvels or or which would fuck with quasar too which we brought up we'll talk about that miss marvel it doesn't talk. matter if they're tiny they have power powers and they can power their way through powering power things so people could just find fucking bracelets and you know just Whatever. I'm a hero. I'm a hero. Like, give her an origin. Uh, for one, they had to make ma this. This really, uh, Marvel has been telling us this character is popular, like immensely popular, <laughs> so popular that they got to completely change the fucking character for a show. So popular, like, it's, it's getting canceled. Yeah, it's bullshit. So it's popular all, that it's... no one knows who she is, and everyone's like, "Wait, is that Ms. Marvel? Like, is that Captain Marvel? Like, who is that? Like, no, no one understands what's going on. Like, the normies." You know what gets under the company's skin the most? Uh, yeah. It's not rumors. No, it's people guessing their bullshit and cutting through <laughs> their bullshit and catching them in their fucking lies. That's what they hate the most. And uh, people have gotten really good at doing it because they're bad. I mean, these companies always go towards the lowest, co what they believe is the lowest common denominator. And they think everybody is motherfucking dumb. And they just will, they'll, yeah, they'll lie, they'll change things, they'll they'll push false narratives. Um, I think as time goes on, Captain Marvel, I think that it does not pass the smell test, but it was still a billion dollar film. Oh, mm -hmm. a billion dollar film, billion dollar film that had its uh, sequel delayed multiple times to February, and the main character demoted. But billion dollar film, total success. Right. Uh, Nozaku Boy for $50 says, Who sees into the hearts of men and the undergarments of women? Peeping Tom, the biological clock is ticking. Oh on my his God. Time bomb. Can Tom survive the burning passion of the frustrated fire starter, Hot Mama? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> clock is ticking, buddy. I thought it was going to go the MILF. No, I think this the hot mama, which is MILF. I mean, same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, they, thank you, Nozaku boy. Um, Did you see that the uh, the owner of Babylon B got banned today from Twitter? Yeah. Yesterday. Hate speech? Hmm? Oh, oh the hate owner speech. got uh, banned. So Babylon yeah, the B owner, gets yeah. banned, and now the owner gets banned. Uh-huh. Um, I put the tweet in the in our. <laughs> yeah, I retweeted it. Um, I told people not to. They, they just didn't listen. I, I, I'm confused. I mean, 
the Babylon B, even though it is a satirical yes, site, it is. Mm-hmm. they are well within their, their rights to announce their own personal woman of the year. Other sites are, so why can't they? Because they pronounce man of the year. <laughs> What's a woman of the year? They didn't they, they they forgot to put the woe in front of the man. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a uh, man. Yeah, because it was a man. It's a man, baby. <laughs> Wigan berries. Um. Little by the way, Gary, you know, these. you know how you were you were talking about what what they hate the most is like people calling what they said. I remember years ago reading uh a, 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 like a I think it was like a essay or something by uh, Damon Lindelof, like your favorite guy, about Lost and hit like while he was working on lost and how people would guess what's going to happen in the the next episodes and stuff. And then they would go back and change it so that it would be different than what people had guessed because they hated it, that, that people had guessed it. And that's why lost was basically crap because they had like no plan and they would change it based on a whim. Yes. And and like DC comics does something very similar, by the way, Uh, and has been for years. They've always been too sensitive. They've always, um, yeah, you just, people are going to guess your shit. Like George R. R. Martin. I'm sure everybody oh, has guessed the ending and fucking half the characters for go- yeah. game. Like it, I'm sure that's fucked with them too, but that's what happens when you take too long. Oh, David Lindelof God. is a fucking moron. He wrote one of the worst shows I've ever seen. Uh, Watchmen was just hateful garbage, hateful, divisive garbage. I never saw hey, and uh, one of the worst case, that. uh, what Watchmen? Yeah, it series? was so good. It got renewed. It got renewed so hard it cancelled itself. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this show's renewed, but it's not coming back for a second season. But it is renewed. Anybody's done. Uh, the only person who's done a proper roast of the first episode is uh, Wolf. Where the Wolf? Oh, the great Wolf fucking hated that show. He fucking tore the first episode up, but nobody did the full season and got down to like the worst event. Mahler, get on it. I the thing I I stole the Watchmen movie. I still want to read the Watchmen uh, graphic novel. I still haven't done that. So I, my passion isn't there. It's somebody else's job. My passion thaws for my brain yeah, yeah. alone. I, there's things we're all behind on, but uh, it is one of the worst case scenarios of uh, of woke entertainment. Period. Yeah, I End couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I just I, saw the ads and like what people were saying about it, and I was like, "There's no way." And it was just basically like the timing of it too, because it was literally during the summer of love. So you're seeing like the exact same thing you're seeing in the news as like what is going on on screen, and it's like. Why am I watching this? Like, what is the point of entertainment when I'm watching what is going on on the news in my entertainment? Like, fuck this. It, it, it is freaking terrible. Um, it is, um, Ozymandias oh, uh, has a daughter yeah, who's Vietnamese, and uh, yeah, not after not during his farts, um, that uh, was better than him. Then they killed her. Um, and then Dr. Manhattan, who went away, who was tired of the human race, even though he learned to love through the silk specter, he, he, he came back for another girl who was, um, a a middle-aged black woman who was much better. And, uh, (laughs) who was prettier and smarter and better. And he was, and he just wanted to come back to die so he could hand his powers to her. And he did it through, he literally, the symbolism is. He hands his testicles over to oh, her no. with an egg. He puts the powers in an egg, and oh. it symbol symbolizes like, "Here are my testicles. They belong to you." And that's Good where they Lord. And they turn, and oh, no, no, it gets worse because the Doctor Manhattan that you remember turns himself black to make her more comfortable. Doctor Manhattan black faced. Yes. That is, dude. <laughs> Why would you do that, serious. Dr. Manhattan? I, I believed serious. in you. I am what? fucking serious. And this was written by the very white Damon, 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 Linda Damon. 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 Linda Damon. Linda Damon. Damon. Apologies to all the Damons watching the show, but Damon. The guy who played Dr. Manhattan, he played uh, Morpheus in the new Matrix. Yes. Didn't he? 
Oh yes, boy, he what a... yes, he did. And that yes, was a dude. Did. Did, did he play the only film I'm... too? He was in Aquaman. Um, yeah. Played, oh yeah, yeah. He no, was Can- in Candyman. Candyman. I was saying. Yes, he did. Holy um, fuck! What a terrible track record so far. Not a very good actor. Uh, I'm going for the role of Black Victim. Damon. In everything I do. In the law. Ah, yeah, Matrix, man. The only film in recent time, and I've watched some shit, but the only film in recent time that I actually stopped halfway through and went, I've had enough. Oh, no. I've actually had enough. Once they played the hundredth clip of the original films, I was like, okay, all right. I gave up when he went, this tastes like a strawberry. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. This greenhouse is really nice and everything. And uh, yeah, fucking fuck your movie. This is absolute fucking shite. I uh, I don't need to finish <laughs> watching it. I've seen enough. I'm going to... I don't care what I did. I didn't know. I might have played a video game. Might have called Gary up. I don't Whoa, know. Whoa, no. Yeah. I don't, didn't don't watch demand, The Matrix at all because... The Matrix is my favorite movie of all time, the first one. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this to myself again. No. They're doing it. That is the same Dr. Manhattan from now. By the way, this was a sequel to the comic book, not the Zack Snyder film, which uh-huh. they never told anybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh they there what's what's incredible about this series is there is a good episode in it. It's all shit except for the fifth episode so they have a new character that's like a rorschach character and it looks like he's got like a, one of those new balloon shiny balloon fucking things over but his origin was actually based in like the the end of watchmen and they showed the squid they showed the, the squid. giant okay. fucking squid okay. so and and that whole scene that whole that whole episode most of that whole episode i'm gonna say 90 percent of it doesn't have any of the identity politics from any other fucking shit and i think this is like the first thing they wrote and it's good. Like, I'm like, wow, that was good. And then they went right back to the fucking shit where uh, uh, the Rorschach gang is all a bunch of white supremacists and they're all fucking dumb. And they work for this dumb white senator who somehow wants to steal the powers of Dr. Manhattan. Like, it's just the it's white supremacists want to want to from the South, want the I, South to rise again. That's but what why they want. did Dr. Manhattan turn himself black? to make the most amazing woman on earth. And that's, that's to make the most amazing woman on earth feel more comfortable. And the what? most amazing, wait, and the most, so you know who the most amazing woman on earth was so a racist. Uh, you might remember her from the Oscars. Oh yeah. It was stupid I, I, cow. I, who said, uh, I know you I don't know you're like reaching for your Regina remote. King, right or is it Regina? Regina King, the most amazing oh. woman and the world who said that she doesn't feel like her son is safe in Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, when Antifa's marching, he probably isn't, but uh, all the other times. Oh, her boy. son was in a swimming pool at the time, sipping some fucking champagne or shit because mum was out, and he was just like, <laughs> nice one, mum. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but if he turned himself black so she could feel more comfortable, which means that she would have felt less comfortable if he was white. So she was an act, she was a racist too. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. She, she wanted she wanted to beat up white boys. Yeah, That's the, the true, white Mala. people have been mean to her, so well, she's like uh I forgot what her it's like Mrs. Knight or something like that is her superhero persona. She's also a cop, but she puts on a mask. She has no superpowers, and she beats the living fuck out of, like, giant men in a uh, Nixon white supremacist trailer park and then tortures them, and they're all scared when she comes in. They're all, oh, my God, this five-foot-six woman's going to scratch me. I don't know what the fuck she's going to do. <laughs> She's going to do an Oscar speech on me. <laughs> yeah, that I would scream. Okay, that's, that's an Oscar speech. Beat me.